to start filming your tutorial for our May craft box. By now you should have received it and so you know that what we're creating today is some lovely string art, mason jar uh, string art with felt flower bouquet. Um, I've had a lot of fun designing this particular craft and I really hope that you enjoy uh, creating it with me. So this video is so that you can stop and pause and come back to it at any time you like. So thanks so much for joining the underground craft movement and let's get started. Bye. Okay, so we're just going through the box now. Uh, you've got a postcard and an underground craft sticker, some candy, hope you enjoy it while you're doing your craft. Then we've got a glue gun, a stain for your wooden plaque, glue sticks, sponge, nails and a hammer. And if you didn't know yet, you're doing a str string art mason jar and felt flower bouquet and those are the instructions and template. And you've got two bits of string, one's for the jar and one's for the heart and some felt and your template for your nails and your wooden plaque. So things that you're going to need for this project from home are paper towel, scissors, some pliers or some tweezers. Just getting started with the stain. Just apply this liberally for the first coat. You'll see that I didn't quite have enough on there to cover it and yes, put something underneath your painting because otherwise it'll end up all over your workspace. So we're just making sure that we're covering all four sides as well as the top and now we're just going to wipe that stain, the excess stain off. Uh, it's up to you to, to decide how much coverage you'd like. Um, I'm just sticking with two coats uh, for mine because I like to see the wood grain coming through. And we're just wiping it off again and then we'll leave it to dry. Okay, now that that's had a chance to dry, uh, you're going to line up your template and just tack it in with one or two nails. Mine seems to be bending a little bit, so I've, I'm going to put in uh, one in the middle, one up the top and one down the bottom. And then I'll get really annoyed again because the pages keep turning like that and it was a little frustrating. So if you've got some washi tape, um, you could probably even just tape it down without tacking it with the nail. And then we'll get started on the heart. So as you can see, I'm using the pliers to hold the nail. That's just to save my chubby little thumbs there from getting bashed with my hammer. Um, you don't have to use it, the pliers. You could use tweezers if you want, or you could use your thumbs. That's up to you. Uh, we're just hammering the nail pattern in now. Um, as you're watching, you'll probably notice that sometimes I knock it off to the side a little bit. That's because I'm not super straight when I hammer and I need to fix up the bent but that's what gives it that lovely handmade character isn't it well that's what I tell myself anyway um, so now we're doing the inside details of the jar um, and just making sure that we get to every spot uh, where you can if there's a place where you think the dots not going to work there you can move it if you like it's very much up to you we're just trying to keep the make sure we keep the dots around the bends as well so that that makes sure that the curve stands out i hope that makes some sense um, i'm just doing the internal part now and then we'll start to pull up our paper template I'm back 
okay so now we're just tearing off the um, tracing paper and I'm sorry this is probably the most frustrating part uh, this is where your tweezers are going to come in handy for just pulling up all the little tiny bits but it doesn't take too long um, and then it's all done and oh my goodness look we all of a sudden have light so sorry about the darkness before uh, when we checked the first lot of clips uh, my husband said that is way too dark and went and bought a 90 watt light for me so yay for hubbies but um, now we're just getting started so we've just got the uh, heart color you'll either have uh, pink or purple depending on your felt pack and we're just tying off on the bottom there just it's just a very simple I'm not sure what sort of knot it is probably a granny knot um, terrible girl guide here not knowing her knots but you're going to tie that off uh, so it's nice and tight and secure and then we'll get to moving our string around stringing our nails so what you're going to do is you're going to go up and around and then up and around and you're just making sure that you're staying on the outside of your nail the whole way along so up and around staying on the same side and you'll do that for the entire heart shape coming back to the center part speed that up for you a little bit there oh sorry I've gone out of frame there sorry about that oh, that doesn't work either okay so now what you're going to do is you're going to take it up and around but the opposite way this time to what you were doing before and that'll give you the inside line there and give you a more definite shape to your love heart now you may have noticed along the way I'm uh, every now and again I'm just pushing down the threads uh, this is to make sure that you've got plenty of room on your nail and if you do it along uh, as you go along it'll make sure that you've got an, enough tension less less tension sorry uh, that you can actually make that happen once it's all tied off you haven't got really enough tension to sort of push it down a decent amount um, and you do need a lot of space left on your nails particularly for your heart because you're about to fill it in Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take you through a couple of different options for filling in your love heart. Now, of course, if you want to, to leave your uh, love heart empty, you can. It's up to you. Um, this one that I'm doing now, it's just a very, very quick one, but still quite effective because it all comes down to the um, point of the heart. Sort of reminds me a little bit of a balloon. Um, the way it all comes down together I don't know but it's, it's quite striking as well um, sorry about the lack of focus there then this next way is probably the one I like the most because it's the most forgiving you just basically don't have to do a lot of thinking in it you can just loop it around wherever you want as long as you're looping to sort of a nail that is diagonal um, from your original nail if that makes sense uh, the reason I like this one is because it does become quite full and then when you have to tuck in your ends you can just very easily tuck them in so I'm just tying off the ends now I left a big tail before I cut that just to make it easier to tie I'm tying it onto the original tail and I think I've tied it about three times there so now I'm going to trim that down and using my tweezers we're going to tuck that in on the side into the thing the string art there and then we're just pushing it down a little bit before we get the hammer out and give it another little bash to make sure that they're all secure and in and there you go we've done our love heart and now we'll be moving on to our jar so you're getting your green thread and what you're going to do is you're going to start off with doing your inside uh, nails first your inside details because it's easier to get to um, well 
that I found anyway. So you're just again doing the going around and down on the one side and you're going to continue that pattern the whole way through so that you get that nice clean look and then I did you can leave it as just the one single line but I did go through and do the other side the inside of it as well I'm just checking my template for where my knots were and it looks like I've actually started in the wrong spot so I'm just undoing it that's the best thing about nail art is that you can um, make a mistake and then just undo it and start again it's a very forgiving uh, little project. So we're just tying off on every end. I'm sorry we've sort of gone out of frame there for a little bit. So every section that we do, we're going up and we're coming back down, especially if you're doing the two lines so that it's outlined. Uh, we're doing coming back to the original uh, knot and then just tying it off. And for each section, we'll start a new one. So now we're going to start on that inside bottom loop. And yes, it does fall off sometimes, but that's okay. We just pop it back on there. So we're just going to go around and loop it around. What oh, we're going to try, maybe we'll forget a few times. You will get the hang of it. It feels a little bit awkward at first, but with more, every time you do another nail, you just get into a bit of a pattern and your muscle memory takes over. So I'll leave you there for the moment just to have a watch without me yabbering over the top. And I'll be back soon. So now we're up to doing the top of the jar and I bet you're looking at those nails thinking oh my god where do I start. Um, don't worry I did the same thing but you do end up finding that point especially if you've got this little tutorial running as well and you'll be able to see it and I think what have I done there I've actually started on the outside of the rim at the top of the jar not the quite top but you know that part that I mean and doing the outside no no what am I doing I'm going along up to the second from the top line 
and then I'm doing the ring around there and then I'll just keep going and I think there's about three sections in this section that you'll tie off so um, it doesn't matter if they're not exact as long as it looks like you've got a couple of sections there that's all that matters okay I'm gonna leave you with that sorry about my hands getting in the way it's hard to sort of give you a good shot when you're doing it with a top-down camera okay Okay, I don't know if you can see there, there is a little, so you see that the um, the string that you're working with gets a little bit twisted, so that every now and again you'll just need to pull it out so that it doesn't knot itself, because um, that will be really annoying. So we're getting there, you can see I've got another line done, and I don't know if you've noticed that I have been pushing it down as I've gone along uh, the same as what I did with the heart. It's just for ease of use um, and to make sure that the, the thread isn't going to pop off one of the nails. Okay, so now we're up to stringing the outside of the jar and we're on the home stretch with this um, string art tutorial. Uh, and then after that, uh, you can pop me on pause and make a cup of tea or have a bit of a stretch of your legs or whatever you need to do and come back to me. I'll be right here waiting for you. It's like that Richard Marx song. I won't sing, don't worry. So you'll notice here I'm actually going along the inside of the nail this time and then I'll finish off with the outside loops of the nail. Doesn't matter, uh, you can do outside first or inside first, um, it's just what I ended up doing. So almost there and then we'll tie off and trim and tuck our ends into the pattern.
Okay, so we're just trimming off all of our ends here. Not to these two ones I've actually cut a little bit short, so if you can leave them a little bit longer, uh, like those two last ones that I've done, uh, they'll be so much easier to tuck in. Uh, this was a little bit fiddly, but I think it actually worked out to be the best hidden one. Uh, so you just pop it through and then trim it off as close as you need to. But these, you can see with these ones, I had a lot of trouble tucking them in, but they got in there eventually. And then we're just tucking the last ones in. And if you have trouble tucking them in, I've just trimmed mine really, really short. Um, well done folks, you've nailed your string art. Now we're on to our felt flowers. You can refer to your instructions or you can just watch along with the video. These are the some of the flowers that we'll be making. I may chuck in one or two extra. Uh, we'll just see how we go. So I'll pop them off to the side. And then we're going to grab our templates and cut them out. So you'll cut these out and then with your leaves just put them off with your green felt. And then you can decide which felt suits which flower. Um, I've gone with the dark purple for the large circle spiral which will be our rolled rose. Uh, one of our rolled roses, sorry. Uh, so I'm just cutting out out here. This is a hot tip from me to you. Um, grab a pin or a pen and either pin that cardboard down to the felt or uh, trace around it. And then what I'm doing with my finger here is just showing you that you can cut your uh, felt spiral out. You can draw a side spiral yourself or you can just uh, wing it. I tend to be what I like to call an efficient crafter, not a lazy crafter. Um, and I just tend to just go for it and whatever happens, happens. It's a bit more organic that way. Here's another one of me being an efficient crafter. Yes, I could cut out every single one of those petals or I could just cut out a cross here, cut out my shape, uh, my rectangle sorry and then I'm going to line it up with my petals, my petal template and we're going to see which way it fits but we've worked out that I can get three out of that strip so um, I'm just going to fold that into threes and then I'm just going to cut along the fold lines. It's a quick way to get a lot of felt cut. I'm sorry again, I've gone out of the frame there. And we're just going to cut them out and then we'll, we'll cut our uh, individual petal shapes out. Um, I'm just cutting through all of those fold lines and then what I'll do is um, instead of lining them up it's a fairly easy shape to cut you just cut it on the diagonal up to the top do a bit of a round and up and down sort of a wavy line three times so you've got three little petal points there and back down so it ends up looking like a nice little petal bit the same if you want to be a little bit more particular you absolutely can just um, trace that petal template out uh, I do a couple at a time, once again, efficient crafting, not lazy crafting. Um, and then what we'll do once I've got those is we're just going to put them to the side and get another lot of felt. And this time I'm doing the daisy petals. So again, efficient crafter, we're going to cut a strip along the blue felt or whatever felt colour you choose for your daisy. And we're going to cut along there, but again, being an efficient crafter, I've folded it in half because it's quicker to cut that way. And then I will um, cut out the petals much the same way as I did for the camellia petals. So I'll leave you here and you can just watch along. So instead of folding here, um, I worked out that it's just easier just to cut uh, just little section, strip sections at a time. They're about one and a half centimetres, I think. Um, as long as your petal 
your daisy petal template fits on it uh, that's the main thing so just cutting those strips some of them will be a little bit thinner but that's okay I don't think um, all the petals in nature are all the same and that's what makes them uh, unique and beautiful so I'm just trimming those up and we'll just cut through all of those Okay, so when you think you've got enough uh, petals for your daisy, you can move on to the next one. And this one, we're just going to cut a um, rectangle strip. Now, this one I actually did cut a little bit too wide. You'll see what I'll have to do when we put it together. Um, but yeah, try and cut that a little bit thinner. Uh, we've just moved on to our mini camellia, cutting exactly the same way, just smaller petals this time. Okay, so coming up next, we're going to do our another spiral template. Um, and this one, we're going to do a little bit smaller than the original template. I didn't have a pen on me at the time. Again, efficient crafting. Scissors make a really good line. So we've trimmed that out. Uh, this is where I decided I think I'm going to try a wavy spiral for my rose, my purple rose. Uh, so I'm just putting in a very organic wave. Um, I'm just sort of cutting it, seeing how it turns out at the end. Um, again, if you want to be a little bit more particular about it, you can. And just trace the line and then you can cut it, but I think it turned out okay. And the yellow one I'm just going to leave as a straight spiral. Okay, so now we're getting our strips for our rolled flowers and our flower inserts. So there's a few of these that we're doing. So I'll just leave you to this and then we'll start gluing. Okay, so we're starting the gluing process now. You'll need a, a scrap of cardboard or paper for your glue gun to rest on. Uh, there is a little stand for these glue guns and you're going to load up your glue and switch your glue gun on. Um, if you've not used a glue gun before, it takes a little while for them to heat up. Um, they can be quite hot to touch, so just be very, very careful. Um, you'll notice a few times that I do actually touch the glue, but that is uh, unintentional. And luckily, these particular glue guns that I've included in your box are a low temp but a high melt. Um, process so you'll know where the, when your glue is ready because the glue will start dripping. This is unfortunately not quite ready yet. I'll jump to the gun a bit here and you'll notice that my um, strips don't glue together properly. So I'm just going to leave that for a little bit longer and let that heat up and while I do that I'm going to trim some little uh, strips not all the way down just about one third to two thirds down and these ones are quite little because this is going to be a flower insert um, so then my glue gun should be ready by now and I'm just going to put a little bit in the middle and then start rolling and you can see the little uh, bud is coming together and then every now and again I'll just put a bit of glue with a big glue strip at the end of the flower and we're going to give that a squeeze to get it to hold in tight and then we're going to fluff our flower and I'm just checking to see which petals that would work better with and I've decided that the little camellia looks really nice with that particular one so what I'm going to do is we're going to glue a little line across each of our camellia petals and we're going to layer them up so we're putting that strip oh needed to refill our glue and we're going to put our strip about halfway along each petal just so that we get that nice uh, wrapped tight feeling that um, all flowers have. So we're just going to continue that around for the first layer. 
and you'll see it's starting to take the shape of a really nice flower there and then when we get to the outside what we're going to do we'll give it a bit of a squeeze to make sure it's all holding get rid of your little cobwebs there um, you're going to fluff it out a little bit and then you'll see where you need to put the outside petals so when you're putting the outside petals on what we're doing is same same process but we're going to be a little bit higher than the original ones uh, just so that we can make sure each of them gets seen so it's just a tiny little bit higher and you're going to squeeze it in and fluff it out as you go and you'll work out where your petals go so you may or may not use all of your petals it's up to you depending on how full you want your flower to look I tend to use all of them because I like really full flowers um, but again up to you Okay, moving on to our next strip, it's another uh, rolled flower, I think this is another bud um, from memory, I think it is, yes. So we're just going to trim this one down, not as thin this time because I think it's for a bigger flower, yeah a little bit bigger this time. So we'll one third of the way down for those little snips and then we're going to roll. I think what I've done here, I've only done halfway through just so that I can see how full I want the bud. But I think I've decided that no, I do want it fuller and I'll keep, so I'll do the whole length so I'll keep trimming that. And then we'll glue it up the same way we did with the yellow rolled flower. Dot on the centre there or a bit of a line and then spin it around and be careful this is where you'll get the glue. And just squeezing that bud quite tightly when you're first rolling so that you don't get a loose um, flower with lots of gaping holes in it. And the strip at the end just to make sure that it holds nice and firmly. There we go and we're going to fluff it. And if you've got any bits poking up the side, you can pop a little bit glue of glue on there. So this one we're going to do our large camellia. I love this combo of pink and grey together. I think it looks quite nice. Um, so same thing as the smaller one. You're just going to do the inner. Well, this one I've actually done a little bit different. I've done the inner petals a little bit lower than the centre bud. Um, so that they come out a little bit lower and then the outer petals will be a little bit higher in the gaps. But that's just going to be a personal choice for you. So we've got our centre part done with our first row of petals and just squeezing it in and it looks quite nice just like that if you like if you didn't want to do any more or you wanted to save those for another flower you can and then we're just popping our outside petals on And she's all done. Isn't she beautiful? I really do like this colour of um, pink and grey. So moving on, what are we doing now? I think I'm doing another bud centre. Yes, I am. So we're doing, I think this one is a thin one again, the same as the yellow one. So I'll leave you to watch that one. 
Okay, so you'll notice on this one I've actually trimmed it as I'm rolling because I do want quite a narrow um, flower centre for this particular flower. But still all the same thing. Strip at the end to get it all tight. Nice and fluffed, but it's just that little bit smaller. And I'm just trying to trim that end a bit there because it was a bit thick. So we're looking at our blue daisy here. Um, there was going to be a dark purple daisy, but I ended up mixing that. You'll see it in the um, in the end when I'm putting the deciding where the flowers are going to go on the board. Um, that that gets tossed to the side fairly quickly, but that'll happen. Um, you'll just decide what fits and what doesn't, and that's okay. So you'll notice with the daisy it's the same um, steps to putting it together as the camellia. Uh, it's just layering the petals over the top of each other and then working out uh, where they're needed for the outside um, petals. Again, I've done a double one. It's quite sweet as the single one as well. It's just what your personal preference is. So now we're going to do uh, another rolled flower but this time we're going to do quite wide strips because this is going to be a flower on its own and this is your bonus one that I hadn't put into your instructions it's the exact same thing as a rolled flower but um, this one I decided to cut the loops down so it looks a little bit more like I think it's meant to look a little bit more like a chrysanthemum um, as you'll see, I left some of the inside ones and it just wasn't working. I was just trying to fluff it up a little bit more. So I ended up trimming all of them and leaving it at that. Now this is the one where I said that I made a bit of a boo-boo one. So if uh, you'll watch this, you'll you'll see what, I, what happened. So I'm cutting these actually on an angle this time because we're doing a diagonal rolled flower. So this will give a completely different look to the normal rolled flower and what I'm doing is I'm cutting different sized strips and then off the end and the start I've also cut it on the angle. So we're just potting the glue in and rolling it up quite tightly and then I already know that I've made a bit of a mistake so I'm putting the glue a little bit higher so that I can trim it down. So now that it's all done you can see it's quite a different looking flower it looks quite nice but I do have quite a long stem on there so I just need to trim it down and re-glue it where it's fallen off now it has gotten a little bit loose which is a bit of a an annoyance but we um, just added some extra glue and put a little base of felt on it it's coming with me and then we're doing another blue rolled flower and I think we've got the purple and yellow rolled flowers to go. This one is again another angle one but this one has been done correctly. So you can see just cutting this one I'm cutting down sort of two-thirds of the way down so that I can get those nice long petals happening. And I quite like the diagonal rolled flower because it does give quite a different look to the um, normal rolled flower. So just pulling that along, rolling it up and finishing it off and then we'll give it a fluff and there we go it's like a little pinwheel
So with the other half of that blue piece, I'm just doing a standard rolled flower. Um, I think there are half a centimetre uh, strips that I've cut there. And we'll just roll that up nice and tightly. And it'll give that nice, um, very tight bud. But I think this one is again too long, so I'm going to trim it down at the end. That's why I put glue halfway up the stem. Yep, so I'm just trimming it off again. And then that one's become quite a sweet little rolled flower. Now I'm working on my rolled roses. So we're just putting the glue on the end tab there and then rolling it up. Now what I like to do here is squeeze quite tightly down the bottom, but then try and stretch out the top so you get a bit of a wavy uh, top petal, if that makes sense. And with the center part, we're going to roll it so it's not fully even on the bottom. And that little bit at the bottom there that I'm hanging on to, we'll just trim off at the end. Popping some glue in every now and again to keep hold of your roll. Because you drop it like that and you'll end up losing it. So the glue just helps it stay in pace, place. Sorry. And we're just... Putting some more glue on and rolling and you can see I'm sort of stretching and bending the top of my felt petals there and I'll start squeezing that bottom in quite a lot to sort of make that um, rose bloom a little bit more than a tight bud. And now I'm just varying the heights of the petals so it looks like a more natural rose and what I'll do here is I'll just twist around that bottom piece and that becomes the base of the rose but what I need to do first is trim off that narrow point there so that it's nice and flat and then we'll just re-roll that rose okay see me rolling oh sorry I promised I wouldn't sing I almost started Okay, just rolling that rose. It's starting to really take that shape of a um, newly blooming rose, which is lovely, and the yellow is quite nice too. So now we're getting around to the end part, and we're just going to pop some glue around the edge. And then when it comes to this little circle bit, you can just give it a little twist, pop your glue on the base of the rose and just flatten it down and just hold it there for a couple of seconds so that it has a chance to bond remove all your spider's web and just fluff out those petals okay so now we're moving on to the spiral and you'll notice that i'm actually starting with that circular base in the um, beginning part as our middle bit of our bud just to give it a bit of a different center to the other one so we're just going to roll that along twist it I've gotten a lot of glue on my fingers by this point but that's okay just twisting it quite tightly and you'll see that we're getting those really nice um, rose petal shapes happening because we've done the uh, wavy spiral so I think the wavy spiral is actually my favorite um, of the rolled roses variety just looks a little bit more realistic I think this would work better as a lighter color though and I think with the darker purple you tend to lose a lot of the definition um, in the deep rich purple color so then we just squeeze put a bit of glue on the end of that strip and then just put it around so what we are working on now is another rolled flower so i won't talk through that i'll put on some music for you to have a listen while you watch
just popping in I've just noticed that I've cut these um, little strips a little bit shorter than I have done with the rest of them that's because I want this one to be quite a um, short petal uh, flower so the longer your snips are the longer your petals will be uh, just a little Sam's tips on flowers and then we're doing that strip to finish off our flower and then I think we've just got our yellow flower and then we're done with our preparing our flowers so we'll go on to oh yeah that's got stuck to my tissue paper there um, and then once we've done our yellow flower we'll move on to putting the flowers onto our boards and that's when it all starts to get very exciting and you've got it all piecing it all together Okay, with that one finished, now we get to pop them all up on our board and play around with the positioning. As you can see, there's that um, dark purple daisy that in a couple of seconds is going to get tossed to the side, never seen of again, because it just doesn't work. There it goes. So um, what you need to do is take a, once you've got it, you know, happy with your layout, take a photo of it um, and then you've got something to refer to. You'll notice that I've glued one of the flowers to the top of the jar it just stops it from um, being uh, this is my jar and these are my flowers it just incorporates them nicely together and makes them look like they're meant to be going together so we're just gluing them on and it really is just as simple as that chuck some glue on the end pop it on the thing and then you'll just build your flower much like building a bunch of flowers in a vase that's exactly what we're doing. So what you may have noticed when I put down the purple one and what I'm about to do when I put down this blue one here is that I actually glued them on at a bit of an angle towards the side. That's so that from all angles when you're looking at it, it looks like it's a real 3D um, picture so it just gives that fullness to the bunch and I've done it again with the white one there as well um, and just a couple more to pop on there and then we're going to get into our leaf placement um, it helps if some of your flowers are a little bit taller than the other ones because then that way you've got that different varying heights so here we are we've got our leaf templates um, again you can use the templates or you can just guesstimate it like I tend to do with mine. I feel like you get a bit more of an organic uh, leaf structure, leaf then. Um, I'm just cutting that piece into thirds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on the diagonal. Again, I'm sorry, I'm out of the frame here. So what we're going to do once I've cut it, I'm just snipping that down. And then we're going to cut a little stem and go around the body of the leaf up to the point which is in the corner there and then you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side and finishing off with the stem it's that easy to cut the leaves they look quite nice um, and having the point of the corner there make sure that you've always got a really nice point on your leaf okay so we're going to keep doing that with the green ones and then we'll do the dark green ones and then we'll do that again with the light green ones and then we'll start gluing them on and I'll show you the different ways that you can glue them on. So when you're placing your leaf you just sort of want to look for any gaps um, that need to be filled or just have a play around with your placement. Um, the two tonal leaves um, look quite nice together or you can just stick with the one 
leaf color it's completely up to you and what your personal preference is uh, so we're just finishing up chopping up these lighter green ones and we'll pop them into the placement there and then start gluing Okay, so once you're happy with your leaf placement, you're going to want to start gluing them on. So what you can do to give your leaves a bit of a curl is just pop a little bit of um, glue at the end there and just pinch in that end and then it makes it look like it's a bit more realistic. Um, so, and then you can just glue them into place. And you'll be getting little those little spiders web things every now and again, but um, they'll disappear again just squeezing in the edge and then popping it into place it just makes them look a little bit more realistic than just the um, flat leaves and when you're gluing it in you can sort of crease up your leaf a little bit and glue it to the board just like I've done there I sort of fold it in in half so what I'm doing is a little strip here so that I can create a bit of a spine in the leaf. So I've just run the, a really thin beading of glue all the way up the centre and squeezed it in. And you can see we've got a bit of a spine happening. I'll do it again here with the light green. Very light on the glue. I'm just squeezing the um, sides together and then I'll just open it up. I'm sorry I've gone out of frame there but you can see what I've done. There, it just gives it a little bit of a leaf spine and then just pop it in so may you've done everything else and then we'll keep gluing these along Congratulations, you're all done. Just tidy up that little bit of spider's web there, have a look at it, sit back and relax and say, I did it, I'm a crafter. We'd love to see your creations, so post them on your Instagram or Facebook and tag us with 
hashtag underground craft movement. We really hope you've enjoyed this month's craft and hope to see you again next month. Happy crafting!